It's time for another double shot. One thing ahead of tomorrow's election that I feel like during this cycle we haven't really heard a lot of mm -hmm. is the story of a parent who said, uh, my young nine-year-old transgender child on the way to uh, their uh, speed walking class turned to me and said, Papa, why does Donald Trump say the rhetoric that is so incredibly dangerous and insightful and will lead to the end of democracy? And I turned to my young child and we cried together. None of that this time. You know, it's very weird. Uh, was that a big part of 2020? Non-stop. I don't recall that. Non-stop. And just, it, it was so annoying. Even all Oh, because it was like, how do we explain it to the kids? Yeah, how do we how do we yeah. have these conversations about the rhetoric? And, and <laughs> you know, the insufferable journalist sometimes would come on and, and talk about how, you know, I've had to talk to my kid uh, to, to, to you know, take them off of the, the cliff, talk them down because they think that there's going to be a civil war because of the rhetoric coming from Donald Trump. Like, Listen. no, you didn't. You haven't had a single conversation with your kid, which is why he's going to grow up to be the, you know what, that he's going to become. I have four kids and given one of them is very young, still poops yeah. his pants. Poop! He's pooped his pants! So I wouldn't totally go by his. I have uh, one almost 14. Yeah, you do. Uh, D'Artagnan, yes. Um, he just popped up in the middle. None of, of my other kids. Oh, there he is. Good boy. Uh, none of my other kids give two rats behind. They don't even know there's an election yeah. happening. You want to know why? Because I'm a good parent. And I'm not sitting there injecting my thoughts into my kids all the time. Mm. This is what you must see the world as. I don't want them even thinking about election stuff. I have a nine-year-old, a seven-year-old, and a five-year-old. And if your kids... Are they? T are you talking about kids that age? Because like, I don't think anybody out there. According should be... to the tweets, they're all three-year-olds, and they turn to Papa. Why does Donald Trump hate women? W what are these kids watching MSNBC all day? Like, yeah, with their parents send or they're hate watching Fox. Go outside, yeah. kids. Play in the yard. Should a nine-year-old know generally that there's an election? I think a nine-year-old can be aware that there's an right, election. A general I don't awareness. think a nine-year-old should have the type of kid. This is just my personal opinion. Yeah. We're raising our kids. Maybe you're the type of parent who wants to shove a tablet in your kid's face all the time and let them play video games and he's watch YouTube. He's a better parent than you are. And in this case, he would be. That's true. It's true. Uh, so maybe if you want your kid to be super involved at nine, instead of focusing on the things that will actually make them a good productive adult, mm -hmm. like playing team sports and making genuine friendships with people and learning how to look strangers in the eye without looking away, uh, then yes, that might be something that you want with your kids, for them to be totally involved at nine. By the way, being able to do nothing about it. How frustrating would it be if you're a parent raising a kid, getting them all ginned up like everybody seems to be. I mean, I'm not, I'm sleeping like a baby, but everybody else seems to be ginned up about it. Mm -hmm. And then the kid's like, well, what can I do? And you're like, well, you can't vote. Actually, well, let's be honest, those kids are the human props for their parents that they go take them out to a protest. And there's some seven year old holding a sign about Black Lives Mattering. And in this household, we respect science and don't believe that any human is illegal. And Here, we got it. Here's what I respect. I respect parents just loving your kids, letting them live their lives as children. There's plenty of time for them to be upset about politics in the future. Relax. <laughs> They'll be miserable when they become adults. Let them be miserable when they're adults. Protect like their the childhoods. We'll see you next time. Jason Rance here with Scott Rerucka from Legacy Group Capital. He's their CEO. So let's talk about someone who wants to invest in real estate. They don't quite know where to go, what to do, where to start, but they do know obviously that right now the market is really, really hot. So you're the place to do it. How do you help? Yeah. So how we help is, you know, we've been investing in the greater Seattle area for over 20 years. And we have a, a, a historical track record that is we're, we're super proud of. Um, double digit returns uh, over time uh, with no investor losses. And if you can find somebody else out there that's done that, you should probably talk to them. And how we really do it is we're lending on real estate and we're also acquiring real estate and building it and developing it. All those things go come out of a fund that people invest into. So there's lending and there's acquisition. And then we share in profits with all of our investors on both those activities. Uh, Jason, most people can't do that on their own. They're not going to go develop properties. They're not going to go be a bank and lend money. But they can jump in with us and they can be that developer and they can be that lender. But it's underneath our umbrella with a 20-year track record that's unparalleled to anything that you'll find out there. 
we've been told that we're one of the best kept secrets in the Pacific Northwest. I don't want it to be a secret. I want everyone to know just about what it is you do. The Legacy Group Capital family of funds offer short term 90 day investments at 7%. Longer term investments, they've averaged double digit returns. Just go to legacyg.com.